Welcome to Betsay's preview of round two of the Champions Cup with myself, Andy Good, and... That's right, I'm Jim Hamilton, and we're going to take a focus and a look at our weekly accumulators with our official betting partner. And guess who that is? I might never have told you before. I'm going to tell you again. It's Betsafe. Betsafe.com. The official betting partner of Saracens. Yeah, it is a bit of a board, but yeah, Saracens, yeah, that's right. So, Goody, we're going to take a look at the Ackers. But firstly, I'm clawing it back. Well, I'm not clawing it back because we've gone the same way this week. It's 4-2. It's 4-2, yeah. We both got them right. Yeah, that's right. Some big wins, weren't there? There was some 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 great ruggers. There was great ruggers. Saracens, I mean, since you retired, how good are they? How good was Nick Azikwe? Nick Azikwe was good. Marit George Cruz, Hang on. back in form. Forget George Cruz. Let's go back to Nick Azikwe. I texted the coach last night. I texted Ian Peel and said, great performance by Saracens. Nick, young Nick Azikwe put in a performance... Jim Hamilton-esque, in quotes. Well, you said that. I said that. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he agreed. Talk, he agreed. You can talk yourself up, whether yeah. the coaches agree. But my, my goodness, Saracens, if they weren't favourites before, looking at that performance, they were so dominant. It was unbelievable. La Rochelle beat Quinns. Yeah. Did, did you expect that or not so much? Well, I thought La Rochelle are good. Quinns, I don't know. I can't work him out. No. Neither here nor there. But I saw them all on Instagram after eating pizzas and celebrating the change rooms a loss, but... There we go. That's yeah, the difference probably. between Saracens and Quinns, though, eh? Of course. Uh, what else did we see? We saw Scarlet nearly. Oh, Lee Halfpenny had a kick to win it, didn't he? Yeah. At Toulon, he scored the try. He played really well, actually, Lee Halfpenny. I just love the fact that when he missed the kick, he was so angry with himself, trying to beat himself up on the field. That shows how much it means to him to play for Scarlet's. You go back to Northampton team, it didn't look like any of them wanted to play for Northampton. So there's a the difference. Lee Halfpenny gutted to miss the kick, uh, which could have given Scarlet's a famous victory at the... Felix Mayo down in Toulon. Uh, but that group is uh, so tight there as well, isn't it? All the groups, actually. I thought the Exeter game... I was going to uh, say that. And I was going to say, you the Exeter, going to steal that one. The Exeter Glasgow, Glasgow. Glasgow. Best thing about the game, your commentary, Jim. How oh, good. Worst thing about the game, your trousers, Jim. That's what happens. When you're on the red carpet, that's what happens. You're there to get judged. And that, that's what happened. I thought my gear was all right. But Glasgow were all right, weren't they? Yeah, they were, but they lost out on a bonus point towards the end as yeah, well, didn't they? they actually, deserved the bonus point. They did. They, it was a cracking game, actually. Um, just the power. Sam Simmons, again, outstanding. Um, yeah, Glasgow really fronted up, uh, which surprised me for a Scottish team. But, um, yeah, Exeter with a, with a valid victory. Yeah, we could go on all day. But let's move on to this week's Hackers. I'm guessing you've gone easy calls again, all home wins again. Or have you... Have you you, you... Yeah, we'll go home wins. Okay, we'll go right, home of course. Wins. I picked out an away victory last week. Well, Claremont. Then. Claremont beat Ospreys down just. the Ospreys. Only just as well, yeah. so that was a close one. My act is this week. I'm going Saracens to beat the Ospreys. Of course. Um, which uh, yeah, you think it would be a foregone conclusion. That Saracens performance, I'm going to say, was the best club team performance I've ever seen. Ever. They dominated really? Northampton. They had 50-odd points. Find me a weakness in their game. I can't see it at the minute. Uh, Farrell should he have been yellow carded for the tip tackle I think I've seen, I've seen him give him yeah but you know, right on the edge I thought they were just so physically dominant it was easy for Saracens it was like a team run you know Liam Williams on the wing he was outstanding so I expect Saracens again to beat the Ospreys comfortably at uh, Allianz Park Ospreys they went behind heavily to Claremont but showed some steel and bounced back and pushing Claremont towards the end to get the draw but uh, unfortunately they got they lost um and then I go to Claremont again. Let's stick with Claremont because Saints, after their embarrassing performance at home at Franklin's Gardens against Saracens. We, we can't, cannot help Saints now. They are beyond help. We've given them help on this little bet safe video feature. Um, they got four Premiership wins on the spin. They did. And now they went top. They, they went did. top. And now they've just gone back downhill. So they're going over to Claremont. Um, I expect them to get an absolute hammering over there at the Stade Marcel Michelin. Bit of French there, do you see that? Michelin. 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 Um, and then let's go back to our old club, Tigers. Uh, they got a losing bonus point over in Paris. They were good. Uh, they were. I, Russell were poor. Nakarawa. How he about was, those offers? good. Similar to you. Ball in one hand, offloading here, there and everywhere. I was chatting to someone about it, actually. Maybe Petra Stupacé, yeah. fellow offloader. Yeah. I was saying, you cannot stop that offload. There's no way you can do it. He's the Fijian Jim Hamilton. He is. He's an unbelievable player. So he pretty much... Uh, uh, Naka... Naka Hamilton. Naka Hamilton. Yeah, Naka Lara Hamilton. Naka Hamilton. No, it just doesn't go. Yeah, no. Um, so I expect uh, Racing, they beat Tigers. Although Tigers went to the corner when perhaps I thought they should have gone for posts um, at certain times in the game. Um, and then the, the outcome could have been different. But I expect them to go back to Welford Road and beat Cast. 
Cast obviously drew with Munster at the weekend. Um, some dodgy refereeing towards the end of that game. There's a few dodgy referees. There was. Um, but I expect Tigers to bounce back and get a five-point victory, actually. They'll, I expect them to get a bonus point at home um, in that tough group. Obviously, with Munster involved in the pool as well, Tigers have got them back-to-back -back in a few weeks' time. So they have to get five points against Cast. Cast really don't travel well uh, in France or in Europe, actually. So I expect a comfortable victory there for the Tigers back at Welford Road. And then it's two teams that have lost in round one. Wasps, my beloved Wasps, against Harlequins. Both teams lost in round one. Wasps obviously lost over to at Ulster at the Kingspan Smash. Stadium. I wouldn't say they were no, smashed. I, I wouldn't got, say they were smashed. I, I thought they turned up. They fronted up. Um, they got a little bit unlucky again. That offload, miracle offload, but it went forward. So it shouldn't have been a try. Charles Piertau, how good? Very good. Um, so from Wasps' point of view, back at the Rico Arena, we've lost five on the spin. Are you going to be there? I will be there. So it's probably going to be another defeat. Yeah, there's a chance. But you're going, you're going to say they're, they're playing Quinns. They're playing Quinns. But Quinns won there at the Rico Arena yeah, last time in the Premiership. Not this time round. You don't think? No. Okay, so my Ackers, um, Wasps to beat Quinns, Tigers to beat Cast, Claremont to beat Northampton Saints, and the Mighty Saracens to beat the Ospreys. Jim, tell me about yours. Well, not controversial. I'm just keeping people thinking. Okay, so we've mentioned the Saracens, Os Saracens Ospreys. I've gone for that as well. Of course you have. I've, you've got to back your own team, haven't you? Saracens till I die. And you spoke about that performance. I'm just going to tell you again. How good were they? They were amazing, to be fair. It's the, honestly, generally, it's one of the best club performances at top level. I'm not talking about beating a lower premiership team. Yeah. One of the best club performances I've seen, both physically, in attack, the accuracy. I think they made something like 124 passes in the first half. Without any knock-ons. You're a Saracens fan, aren't you? I'm not. I'm a yes, Wasp, you are. Wasp You're a Saracens. So I like got, Saracens, though. They're a good team. They're a great team. So I've gone Saracens to beat Ospreys, of course. I've gone Scarlets to beat Bath. Yep. Now, I'm a fan of the Scarlets. Yep. My mate John Barkley, captain, he's out injured at the minute, is uh, captain of Scarlets. Big fan of what they were doing. I thought they played some great ruggers at the end of last year. They obviously won the Pro 12, what it was back then. Um, not many teams, apart from Saracens, go to too long and look comfortable. Mm. They look comfortable. They're up against Bath. Bath are again are kind of one of them North, uh, Northampton, Quinns. You know, Bath are kind of hot and cold. Comfortable victory against Benetton Treviso. But Benetton dominated possession at times as well. Yeah. I, I was shell-shocked by Bath's performance. Lacklustre, and it was a game where when you've got an Italian team in your pool, you earmark it as a five-pointer at home. Um, didn't have much energy. I know there's a couple of injuries and stuff, but credit to Treviso. Yeah. Benetton Treviso did well. And that's why I've gone for Bath to be defeated by Scarlets. A uh, great try by Bath as well. Maybe try of the season. Zach Mercer. You see yeah, him length, length of the field. I think Rockin Nguni. I think is that how you pronounce it? Rockin Nguni. Yeah. Rockin Nguni. I think he must have set it up. He did. Of course he did. So I've gone for Scarlets to beat Bath. I've gone for Montpellier to beat Exeter. Oh, controversial. Controversial. I like Exeter, right? I love Exeter. I lo yeah, I like Exeter. They're champions of England. I'm just not convinced in this tournament that they're where they need to be. Rob Bax has talked about, they've looked back on what they've done before when they go into Europe, they, they've talked about needing more. And then this season he said, well, we don't need more, we just need to do what we do. And they looked uncomfortable against Glasgow at the weekend. I know Glasgow are a good team, they're unbeaten in the Pro, 12, uh, Pro 14 this year. But I wasn't convinced by Exeter, I'll be honest. I just, I, yeah, I just... No, I agree. It was a dewy night, so there was a, a few spilt balls and stuff. And you've got to give credit to Glasgow. I thought Glasgow fronted up physically. Um, you know, Exeter, the way they play, they keep the ball in, in, in play a lot. They try and push the pace. They try and keep the ball alive. Glasgow are very similar team to that, aren't they? And I just yeah. thought at times, Glasgow, while well, listening to your commentary, Jim, um, perhaps didn't quite have that physical edge towards the end of the game. Yeah. But Glasgow are a quality team. They're six from six in yeah, the Pro 14. So Exeter to beat them and deny them a bonus point was good, but going to Montpellier is a completely different beast. And that's why I said Montpellier, they got a point away from home. They did. Look at them go. But when you talk beasts, yeah. how about Nandolo? He's a beast. He is the biggest man I've ever seen on a rugby field. And he kicks the ball. And he can shift. Big man. Big man that can Similar. kick. Oh, Similar. Similar. Big man who can kick. But Montpellier, under Vern Cotter, They've got the checkbook out this summer. Louis Pickamoles, Ruin Pina, just to name two world class players. Mm. And I think that. Aaron Cruden could be back this week as well. Yeah, exactly. That's crucial. Agreed. New Zealand, New Zealand International 10. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with you actually. I think Montpellier, they'll, it'll be close, but I think they'll just snatch it. Yeah. Uh, and then I've gone. See, I wasn't sure whether to go between Munster and Racing. 
but I haven't. I've gone for Glasgow to beat Leinster. I think Glasgow going back home at Scotston, the fortress of what they call it up there. They're a good team against Leinster, who are a good team. Very good team, yeah. Both very good teams going against each other. I didn't want to make it comfortable. I no. wanted to make it interesting. Yeah. So you said I've like, gone for the easy ones. And I think you've gone. So you've gone for four home wins as well, have you? Yeah, but uh, not. Yeah, there you go. yeah, but you know, Glasgow to beat Leinster. Uh, we we touched on Glasgow. Leinster. They're making noises about wanting to make a point in this year's competition. Henshaw played well, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And under the guidance of Leo Cullen, great looking man. Good looking fellow. He's Leo a Cullen. good looking man. If you get a chance, Google Leo Cullen. Leo Cullen. Best looking second row I've ever played with. Great man, though. Good bloke. Top bloke. Absolutely. Great man. Good yeah. coach as well. Can you speak to the guys there? Um, you know, really good coach. Exactly. And they've got Stuart Lancaster as, as well, though. Mm. Big fan of him, aren't you? So, yeah, the old school teacher. So for my hackers for this week are, of course, Saracens to beat Ospreys, Scarlets to beat Bath, Montpellier to beat Exeter. I've gone for the mighty Glasgow to beat Leinster up at Scotston. Controversial, no. So those are the accumulators for week two of the Champions Cup. And don't forget, every week, we're going to preview our accumulators. And our accumulators are available to both new and existing BetSafe customers. BetSafe, the official partner of... Yeah. Saracens. Saracens.